The Emilia Romagna Grand Prix was something of a masterclass from Red Bull. Max Verstappen won both the sprint race and the Grand Prix proper, as the team enjoyed its most complete result of the season at Imola, securing a 1-2 finish, its first since 2016. And indeed, Max Verstappen was in a league of his own. Following a disappointing Australia, Red Bull had work to do as it struggled to work its tyres quite as well as Ferrari could. But for Imola, the roles were almost reversed. Verstappen powered to pole, dispatched Leclerc in the sprint as Ferrari hit more tyre wear, and then danced through the drying conditions to end the full race 16.5 seconds ahead of teammate Sergio Perez. Part of that was undoubtedly down to Red Bull understanding its RB18 better, but the team also arrived in Italy armed with some new updates to take the fight to Ferrari. Let's take a look at them. For starters, Red Bull introduced a small winglet to its floor keel, akin to the design Ferrari has been running this season to offer a slight downforce boost in this area. Ahead of the weekend, the team noted that the local load has been added by the fitment of a narrow span secondary wing to the keel panel, which has been narrowed towards the leading edge. Here, the splitter flicks up at the trailing edge, bidding to control any vortex production and increase the energy of the airflow passing underneath the car under the Venturi tunnels. Taking a leaf from Ferrari's book seems to have worked, and it's also interesting to see how the teams are already beginning to copy each other as they try to forge the best path for upgrading their 2022 cars. The team has also added an update to its rear brake cooling package to improve the overall reliability of the system. This has, according to the team, enhanced mass flow for additional rear brake material and brake caliper cooling from inlet to exit duct revisions. There have been no changes to any of the internal cooling within the brake system, however, with the team presumably satisfied with the transit of airflow within that area of the car. The change to an 18-inch wheel design has changed how the teams focus on developing their brake duct cooling solutions, as the heavier wheels have more inertia and thus require more energy to stop. And also, the wheel covers also make heat transfer away from the brakes more difficult, meaning the teams have to focus on how to draw the heat out of the assembly in different ways. For Red Bull, it appears the attention to the details has worked, although it should be noted that Ferrari elected not to bring any upgrades to Imola. Team principal Mattia Bonotto noted before the weekend that the sprint format left the team with very little opportunity to assess the merits of any new upgrades, owing to the reduced number of practice sessions and teams being locked into Parc Verme on Friday night. Instead, Ferrari is expected to have an upgrade for its power unit in Miami, and then introduce further changes when the F1 Circus returns to Europe for the Spanish Grand Prix. In the meantime, Mercedes continued its struggles at Imola, qualifying well outside the top 10. It was only due to George Russell's opportunism at the start of the race that it was able to hold on to fourth place. Regardless, the team did bring a series of updates to Imola to try and find more performance and get its season back on track as it currently wrestles with an inconsistent car. The first of those was in adding an additional fin to the flanks of the car. Mercedes stated that these vanes improved the airflow quality into the side pod radiator duct and therefore improved the overall cooling of the car. The team also changed the shape of its side impact spar housing to remove small areas of separated airflow and improve airflow to the rear of the car, continuing its pursuit of performance. There were also minor changes to the floor, with the curl ahead of the rear tyre changed also to reduce airflow separation, suggesting that the car is producing numerous aerodynamic inconsistencies that are hampering the W13's performance. Mercedes also reworked the deflectors at the rear of the car to increase the local load, which has the run-on effect of improving the overall diffuser performance. That Mercedes categorised all of its updates as performance-driven means that the team is at least active in its bid to return to the front, but is currently not willing to make wholesale changes at this juncture. In a post-race radio message to Lewis Hamilton, who was classified 13th, Toto Wolff admitted that it had been a terrible race for the seven-time champion side of the garage and acknowledged that the car was still undrivable. Regardless, the team is looking to press on. You can still never really discount Mercedes, even if it's struggling for the time being. And even if the updates being brought to the circuit at the moment do seem small, we can usually expect a bigger series of packages being brought to Barcelona, as is traditional. As teams go testing there and have decades worth of data, it's a sensible choice to compare the cars. Barcelona also isn't too far to ship over additional new parts. Miami, however, is next up and presents an all new challenge to the teams. And so, the question on everybody's lips is this, will it be a Ferrari track or a Red Bull track? We can't wait to find out. <laughs>